So this is my in-depth branded Despia deck profile for Master Duel. This is probably one of the strongest decks to come out in quite a while and will probably be all over the ladder so you really want to be prepared for this one. Now I will be making this in-depth because I know a lot of Master Duel players have not played the TCG or at least didn't play back when this was the good deck like a few months ago. And also if you did play the TCG at the time of this deck then you don't need all the explanations right so with that being said you can follow along i will be explaining basically every card so the branded despial deck is essentially two different engines that were kind of designed to work together you have the branded cards and the despia cards so we start off with two despian tragedy this card says if this card is sent to the graveyard or banished by a card effect you can add one despia monster from your deck to your hand except despian tragedy you can banish this card from your graveyard and target one branded spell or trap in your graveyard set it to your field so the first First effect is what you're usually going to be using to search for another Despia monster, which, which you will then be fusing. This also triggers when it is sent from a branded fusion, because it is sent by an effect, and that way you basically get your whole combo going. I will be doing a quick combo tutorial at the end of this video, by the way. Then the second effect can still be used to reuse some of these branded spells, but that's usually going to be more in the grind game and doesn't come up every single game, because people will be scooping to you when they see your board. Next, we have Triple Max C. Do we need an explanation? This card is unfair bullshit. Just, you know, always run three. If you're building a deck, you're always running three. The only exception is sometimes Eldritch builds. Then we have Triple Ash because every single player will now be playing Branded Despia. And so you want to be able to Ash that and also to stop your opponent from max seeing you. Ash basically got even better now. And so you need to play three. Next, we have Edge Imp Chain. This card says when this card declares an attack, you can add one Edge Imp Chain from your deck to your hand. That never comes up. But if this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, you can add one Fright Fur card from your deck to your hand. So that Fright Fur card will be one will be going over and so this way you just keep on using resources and you keep on adding polymerization and then you can keep on fusing. So basically this card makes it so that when you get ashed on your branded fusion, you can probably still play the game. And if you don't get ashed on your branded fusion, you might be able to make an even bigger board. Then we have one Fairy Tale Snow. Basically this deck kind of wants to have one light in the deck because you can send it in certain combo lines and also this deck already runs a foolish burial so you might as well have one really powerful extra target this is a graveyard type of deck so fairy tales no is just insane next we have two fallen of albas the effect you don't use that often in the deck technically you can it says if this card is normal or special summoned you can discard one card fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters on either field as fusion material including this card so you're essentially able to super polymerization you're able to use your opponent's monsters to fuse. However, the main reason you use this is because it is the Fallen of Albaz name, which you need for a lot of the fusions. The reason I like running two here is because Called by the Grave is at two in Master Duel. And so if someone called buys this and then you have like a tough time getting into your Lubellion to, to like do stuff, you know, you just don't want to lose your second. It does come up definitely. And you also don't want to draw it and then being stuck with it. Like I know some people during the TCG times were running only one of this but I just definitely feel like two is correct here. Next we are playing a Luber the Jester of Despia. This is the normal summon of the deck. This is the best card in the deck after Branded Fusion. It says if this card is normal or special summoned you can add one Branded Spell or Trap from your deck to your hand. Then another effect that doesn't come up as often but it you know it does happen. If a phase of fusion monster you control is destroyed by battle or leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect while this card is in your graveyard you can target one effect monster your opponent controls special summon this card and if you do negate the target targeted monsters effects until the end of this turn. So this way you basically have a new body with which you can either block an attack or you are able to use it for fusing further at the next turn. With that being said, the most important part is the fact that it searches a branded spell. So usually this card is going to search for branded fusion, which is the heart and soul of the deck. But sometimes if you already have a branded fusion in your hand and you might not want to search red or you, you have red already in hand, the card you're going to be searching is branded lost. But more on that later. With that being said, a luber basically searches like all the branded spells, which is incredible for the deck. Next, we have Tri Brigade Mercury. When your opponent activates a monster effect while you control a fusion monster that mentions Fallen of Albas, spoiler alert, it's almost all of them. Quick effect, you can send this card from your hand or phase up field to the graveyard, negate that effect. This is basically a super powerful hand trap. It's like an effect veiler on steroids. The only thing is, you need to have a Fallen of Albas fusion. So this only works going first. However, we only run it at one because it is searchable with Branded Lost, and Branded Lost is searchable with a Luber. So, uh, you 
you very often in your combo will have a hand trap on field, which means you don't die to something like a Forbidden Droplet. If this card is banished, you can add from your deck to your hand one Fallen of Albas or one monster that mentions it except Tri Brigade Mercury. Then we have Ad Libitum. Ad Libitum is used in our main combo that I will be showing you later on. It says during your main phase, you can make all monsters currently on the field gain attack equal to their own level times 100 until the end of the opponent's turn. This is just a way to OTK more easily if this thing is still on board. However, the really important part, if, if this card is in your hand or field used as fusion material and sent to the graveyard or banished, you can target one of your Despia monsters or level 8 or higher fusion monsters that is banished or in your graveyard except Ad Libitum and Special Summon it. So basically, if you fuse with this and another level 8 or higher fusion, then suddenly you get that level 8 or higher fusion back. And that is going to be crucial for the main combo this deck does because you are basically able to get your Mirror Jade back. But more on that later. Then we have two Polymerization. This is just to manually fuse if you've been stopped on Branded Fusion or to have an even bigger combo. And it is searchable thanks to the Edge Imp Chain. But you're going to see why very, very soon. Then we have one Foolish Burial. This is a graveyard deck. You are able to either dump your Despian Tragedy or your Snow. Then we have Fright for Patchwork. This card is basically the big plus. It says add one Edge Imp monster and one Polymerization from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one Fright for Patchwork per turn. This is basically a pot of greed, but only for fusion decks that are willing to run, run Edge Imp Chain. So it will add the Edge Imp Chain and the Poly, and that way you can now Poly with the Edge Imp Chain and something else. Or if you already discarded your Edge Imp Chain, you can then search for your Fright for and then activate Fright for and get another Poly and another edge imp chain. So that's basically like the little engine that way uh, that keeps you plusing and keeps you fusing through uh, Ash. Another thing people like to run with this whole package is Allure, but I just felt like we are already running like so much stuff in this deck and finding room is really hard, but it is a really solid card, especially with a tragedy, especially with a Mercurier. But then you also kind of want to run the Albion. So it's up to you. You know, if you want to run the Lure of Darkness, it's definitely a powerful card. I did run it at a time in the TCG as well. So you could but god when you're already playing the max season here and the double called by with the cross out with the suit again we'll get to these cards later but it's very hard to find room but allure is definitely very solid and was often played with a fright for package as well it also baits ash which is really important because let's say your opponent is just clicking okay in master duel constantly that they can ash they probably will ash if they're not good so at the lower rankings if you're able to activate fright for first they might just ash that and not ash your branded fusion so also keep that in mind but of course, at higher rankings, people won't be doing that. Next, we have Lightning Storm. Now, this might be a bit of a contentious one. At the time in the TCG, we weren't actually playing Lightning Storm in the main deck. However, this is Master Duel. It is best of one. Back row decks exist. And are you really going to leave that to chance? Personally, I'm not. And more interestingly, though, I feel the current format that we're about to enter in Master Duel is actually a very Lightning Storm friendly one. Why do I say that? Basically, the two big decks that we can expect to see are going to be Sword Soul and Branded Despia. Of course, on top of the Prank Kids, Brave, all of that good stuff, you know. But beyond that, people are excited for the new cards. They want to play that big new long one. They want to play those Despia cards. So let's assume that we're going to see a bunch of that. Lightning Storm is actually really good against both. When the Sword Soul players stop making Baron and start making Shishing Long One, if you can Lightning Storm everything, you could just Lightning Storm Shishing plus Chi Shao and the whole deck falls apart. Really solid stuff, in my opinion. If your opponent is playing Branded the Despia and you Lightning Storm their Branded in red, they don't really have that much interruption left anymore. And you can also get rid of their Branded Lost. You could also just Lightning Storm their whole field and now they need to chain the Branded in red or they won't have a Guardian Chimera. If I'm currently like speaking in a language that's uh, hard to understand because you haven't played yet, just take my word for it. This card into Branded Despia and Sword Soul is really solid. And so for the first time in a while, playing back row removal isn't actually that bad. You know, playing a Lightning Storm to not lose to the weird people still playing back row in a best of one format where you don't have your side is suddenly actually really decent into the actual meta as well. So I think you should really be taking that opportunity right now to just lightning storm both the meta decks and the off meta decks. Next we have Branded Fusion. This is the heart and the soul of the deck. Fusion summon one fusion monster that mentions Fallen of Albas as material from your extra deck using two monsters from your hand, deck or field as fusion material. You cannot special summon monsters from the deck except fusion monsters the turn you activate this card. This is also why we don't play anything but fusions. We want to be able to brand that fusion constantly. But again, you will see with the main combo why this card is so crazy. Then we have the one branded loss. This card has so much text, but it is so good. Activate
activation of your cards and effects that include an effect that fusion summons a fusion monster cannot be negated. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects when a monster is fusion summoned this way. You have so many effects that are all chaining in the same chain when you are playing branded spells and your opponent won't be able to do anything to them thanks to branded lost. It is absolutely insane. Also, if you fusion summon a fusion monster, you can add one Fallen of Albas or one monster that mentions it from your deck to your hand. The monster that mentions it is the Tri Brigade Mercurier. So you can randomly just add a hand trap. Then I'm playing two Super Poly. I will say Super Poly might be cuttable. Why do I say this? Well, this card is absolutely insane in the mirror. But let's say people aren't playing Branded Despia as much as we might expect. Then suddenly Super Polymerization gets a bit worse. Now, there are still a lot of boards that are breakable with Super Poly thanks to how our extra deck looks just by us first summoning something and then just Super Polying what they have left. So it's definitely not going to be a bad card, but it's definitely going to overperform in the mirror. So if you're noticing during your ranking, like, damn, I'm not really facing the mirror that much. You could cut this. If you notice, damn, I'm not facing the mirror. It doesn't really come up. Just cut this. Maybe play some Forbidden Droplets, something like that. Or maybe you want to play more engine. You know, maybe you want to cut this for those allures because they're really solid. You could do that technically. But for now, I'm like, OK, let's see how much mirror there is. And if there is, this Super Poly is going to overperform. It's going to be absolutely amazing. If you were playing the TCG back when this card was alive together with the Branded Despia, when Branded Despia was basically the thing, drawing Super Poly won you the game. It was basically a dice roll format of do I draw the Super Poly? Oh, I did. GG, bro. Do I draw the Ash? Oh, I didn't. Oh, GG, bro. That's basically that format. So Super Poly in the mirror, insane. That's why it's currently chilling at two in my list. But again, if I notice, damn, no one's playing this stuff, then I'll put in the allures instead. Or maybe the droplet again, we'll have to see. Next, we have two Call by the Grave. Call by the Grave is going to be a blessing and a curse. On the one hand, having two means we won't get ashed as often. But on the other hand, our opponent having two means we will get our branded in red hit more often. So it's going to hurt seeing this card in our opponent's hand, but it is what it is. Then we have one cross out designator. Once again, we really want to dodge our opponent's ash. But let's say they don't ash us and they have the call by the grave in their hand. We want to be able to flip our cross out on their call by activation to stop their call by from resolving by banishing our own. <laughs> so cross out is going to be really incredible in this deck. Hitting Maxi, hitting Ash, maybe hitting our opponent's branded fusion even, and then also hitting the call by. It's just going to be an insane card. So yeah, cross out at one. Uh, it's still an insane card. We need to run it in this deck. Then we have triple branded opening. This card says discard one card and take one Despia monster from your deck and either add it to your hand or special summon it in defense position. Also for the rest of this turn after this card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck except fusion monsters. So this basically means we can grab our Aluber and then Aluber adds our branded fusion. This basically means that we have nine cards in this deck that start the full combo. Branded opening starts the full combo because it leads to Aluber, which leads to branded fusion. Aluber starts the full combo because it leads to branded fusion and branded fusion starts the full combo because it is branded fusion. So nine cards. Now it also has another effect. If a fusion monster you control would be destroyed by card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. So you are able to stop destruction effects, which is also why when you're going to try and lightning storm an opposing branded despia board, you need to be very careful that they don't have a branded opening ready because it will completely nullify that. So usually you want to use lightning storm on the back row instead if they have that opening lying there. So yeah, opening a really good searcher. It can also trigger some stuff when you discard with it because it's not discarding for cost, which is really cool. So you can discard tragedy, you can discard edge imp chain, really solid card. Next, we have branded in red. This is our final fusion spell. It's a target one despia monster or fallen of albas in your graveyard, add it to your hand, then you can apply the following effect. Fusion summon one level 8 or higher fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand or field, but it cannot attack directly this turn. You're usually going to be using this to fuse on your opponent's turn, so you don't care about the attack clause. And this way you basically disrupt them that way. And uh, forbidden droplets, you don't really care. Like they droplet or dark ruler your board, and then you're like, okay, but you're still going to be playing around this branded in red, maybe even this hand trap I searched, maybe even a set super polymerization and so forth. So this makes it so this deck is very hard to Forbidden Droplet, which is also why I'm currently not running it. I'm like, damn, if my opponents are all going to be playing Branded Despia, do I really want to droplet their board? Hell no. But again, we'll see what the rest of the meta looks like. Then for the extra deck, the only card where I'm like, uh, do I want to run this? I'm not sure, is the one Mud Dragon. Mud Dragon of the Swamp, the only reason you run this is it says two monsters with the same attribute but different types. This means it is a pretty solid super poly target. However, it is not a solid super poly target in the branded mirror and in sword soul this makes it so this card is 
kind of like in the weirder matchups our super poly target is that worth it i don't really know i'm playing it right now just to make super poly have more decent targets in our extra so it's not just good in just branded mirrors but it's possible that you notice damn i'm not that big of a fan of this mud dragon it doesn't seem to come that often maybe i'm constantly running into branded despia then you might cut it for some other card then i have one drago stapella this is basically just a negate let's not waste too much time on it and it's really easy to make because it asks for one fusion and one dark monster and guess what our entire deck is fusions and dark monsters that also makes the super poly extra good because if your opponent is playing branded despia you can super poly both their monsters and get your own drago stapella you just grab a fusion and a dark boom however there's other targets in here you can super poly from their board as well so you kind of need to read the game state next we have titanic lad the ash dragon this card says during the end phase if this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there this turn you can add to your hand or special summon one dogmatica monster or one fallen of albas from your deck might come up sometimes it also asks, asks for a fallen of albas plus one monster with 2500 or more attacks so you could like fuse into it with fallen of albas effect more importantly however we have two albion right here this says fallen of albas plus a light monster if this card is fusion summoned you can fusion summon one level eight or lower fusion monster from your extra deck except albion the branded dragon by banishing fusion materials mentioned on it from your hand field and or graveyard so what you do is you activate branded fusion sending the fallen of albas from deck and your fairy tale snow and now you can banish your albion plus your fallen of albas to make a mirror jade now that is not the primary combo line and i'll show you what the actual combo line is but it is an option however the best part about this card is the second effect during the end phase if this card is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn you can add to your hand or set one branded spell slash trap directly from your deck so what you're going to be doing is you will set a branded in red by sending this to the graveyard with your mirror jade this way you have access to branded in red really easily next we have despian quiridis this card says a despia monster and a light or dark monster again very easy because we have a bunch of despia monsters and a bunch of dark monsters it says during the main phase quick effect you can change the attack of all monsters currently on the field to zero until the end of this turn except level eight or higher fusion monsters so this way you basically can always attack over any board because everything you play is a level eight or higher fusion monster and then if this phase up card in its owner's control leaves the field because of bonus card effect you can add to your hand or special summon one fallen of albas or one despia monster from your deck so you basically have follow-up then we have two masquerade the blazing dragon i think people are truly gonna hate this card very soon it says while you control this fusion summoned card your opponent must pay 600 life points to activate cards or effects now it is very very normal for a branded decks to just say okay i'll make two of this and now you have two of these annoying dragons and together they deal 1200 life points whenever your opponent does anything so now they are starting to activate effects to try and get rid of, of these things but but as they're trying to get rid of these things they keep on taking burn damage and so very often people will just see two of these dragons and go oh guess i'm losing because i will be dealt 8000 life points before these guys are gone that's why this is very solid especially because you can also just make a board that has, that's then backed up by one of these or two of these or you could even make this in your opponent's turn and so forth so that's why we're running two it is very uh normal for us to randomly get ashed maybe on branded fusion and then still ending on, on double masquerade or something crazy like that then we have mirror jade the ice blade dragon this is the boss monster this is the reason the deck exists it requires a fallen of albas and then one fusion synchro exes or link monster this card gets extra good with super poly because notice you could literally just normal summon fallen of albas and then fuse off anything from your opponent into this because you have a fallen of albas and one thing from your opponent being a fusion synchro exes or link however the reason it's actually the heart and soul of the deck because of how easy it is to make and all of the little things you can do with it. it says you can only control one of this and then once per turn quick effect you can send one fusion monster from your extra deck to the graveyard that mentions fallen of albas as material banish one monster on the field also this card cannot use this effect next turn so basically you are going to be sending your albion and then you can banish one thing on the field and then that albion is going to set on our branded spell and then you can keep going like that now people don't really realize how powerful that is because you read this and you think like huh you're just getting to set a spell and banish one thing is that that good yes it is that good it is very hard to interact with however it has one more really annoying skill if this fusion summoned card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card so basically always you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls during the end phase of this turn so you just destroy everything if they don't if they don't get rid of this and then otk you they will lose it all then we have two lubelion the searing dragon one dark monster and one fallen of albas if this 
card is Fusion Summoned, you can discard one card, Fusion Summon one level 8 or lower Fusion Monster from your extra deck, except Lubelion the Searing Dragon by shuffling Fusion mon Monsters mentioned on it into the deck from your monsters on the field, graveyard, and or phase of banished cards. For the rest of this card, blah blah blah, doesn't really matter. This is basically the way you're going to be making your Mirror Jade. I will be showing you the combo very shortly here, and then you'll instantly understand what I'm talking about. Then Guardian Chimera. This card is insane. It just requires three monsters with different names. Must be Fusion Summoned using only Fusion Materials from hand and field with at least one monster from each. So you can have two in hand, one or field, or two on field and one in hand. That's how you need to make it. And then if this is fusioned by a spell, card or effect, you can draw cards equal to the number of cards used as material from the hand. So this way you're literally just refunding the cost from hand. And if you do destroy cards your opponent controls equal to the number of cards used as material from the field. So when this is made, you're going to refund the cost from hand and then you're going to destroy on field as many as you can. The main combo is essentially going to make this on your opponent's turn. So they normal summon something, they special summon something. You're going to activate Brandon in red. You're going to make this guy. Suddenly you're going to draw cards and you're going to pop your opponent's field and then it's game over. Also, while polymerization is in your graveyard, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. And we are running two poly, which we can search with patchwork right here, which we can also search off edge imp chain. So we almost always have that poly and then our chimera cannot be targeted. Finally, Proskenion, not the most important card, honestly, but uh, you can target a fusion synchro exes or link monster in your opponent's graveyard and banish it or special summon it to your field. And then when this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you inflict their attack or defense to them. Not the biggest deal of a card, this one, uh, but it does ask for a Despia plus a light plus a dark, so you can sometimes do some interesting things. Now let's go over the combo. I will say, as you can see, this deck right now, I don't have it built because I just didn't pull enough. But as you know, I played it in the TCG. So we can literally swap to right here my physical cards. So this is my extra deck right here. Just a couple cards. I'm just going to show you how the combo goes. So first card, we have our branded opening. We are going to activate it and you're going to want to activate it in the draw phase. This way, you cannot get a effect Veilert or Drolled, which is really, really cool. That way you're basically already playing around some hand traps. So you're going to activate Branded Opening, discarding something random from hand. Then you're going to Special Summon our Aluber right here. Aluber's effect is going to activate and it's going, oh, sorry, I'll send this to the graveyard. It's going to add us a Branded Fusion. We're going to then activate Branded Fusion, which is going to send two things from deck to graveyard. It's going to be a Fallen of Albas, because you need to Fusion Summon a Fallen of Albas monster, and then a Despian Tragedy. Then we're going to go into Lubelion. You want to set your chain links, uh, however, what you're basically trying to play around. So it might be like chain link one and chain link two or chain link one and chain link two, however you want to protect essentially. And then you're going to discard one card for Lubelion because that's the cost. Then your tragedy is going to add, remember that these are currently in the graveyard right here. Your tragedy is going to add a ad libidum to your hand. And then your Lubelion is going to shuffle itself back together with the Fallen of Albas. So Fallen of Albas goes to the bottom of the deck. The Lubelion is going to go into your extra and it is going to make a Mirror Jade right here. Now you have this setup. You're going to activate Mirror Jade to banish your Aluber and you need to send this card to the graveyard from your extra deck for a cost. And then during the end phase, your Albion was sent to the graveyard. So you get to set a Branded in red like this. So Branded in red is right here and you set it. And that's the board. And it doesn't look that crazy, right? It looks kind of pathetic. You're like, wow, well, really? Is this the board? Am, am I supposed to be excited over this? Yes, you have to be very excited because notice this all starts from one opening. So you still have, except for your discarding and so forth, but those discards could also draw you more cards because if it's an edge imp chain, you get your patchwork and so forth. Or if you had the patchwork, you can activate it, get the edge imp and then discard the edge imp, get more cards back. So you still have like a bunch of cards. You might have even like polyed into more stuff, but this is just the one card leading to this setup. In your opponent's turn, you can activate your branded in red. You can target the tree tragedy. So tragedy will be added to your hand. Now do this when your opponent has committed something. You know, they've they've made a monster, they've summoned a monster, they've done something already. Because this branded in red is going to fuse this ad libitum, this tragedy, and this mirror jade. Three monsters, one from field, two from hand, into a guardian chimera. Now a bunch of effects are going to go off. And again, you need to choose the chains wisely, depending on like, oh, which hand trap am I, am I trying to play around and so forth. This ad libitum is going to special back our mirror jade. So we once again have access to that banish. We can once again start pew pewing our opponent. This Guardian Chimera is going to draw us two cards. Now, I don't really have two cards, but uh, ju let's just say we draw two random cards. Just two like this. Two empty cards. This Tragedy is going to once again search for something for the deck. Because this was also used for the Fusion Summon. Remember that. It's going to add this. And also your Guardian Chimera also gets a pop. So you've drawn two.
two, you've popped something from your opponent. You've gotten your banish from your opponent back. You've searched a Luber as the follow-up for next turn. And then in your turn, you might even use your Despian Tragedy to set some stuff back. And then you also have your Bandit opening, which still protects from destruction. And if they then get rid of your Mirror Jade, they lose their entire field. All of that from one card. And again, you'll notice once you start playing this deck more, there's so many little lines and little things and there's constant recursion. Like everything you do leads to more cards that you can just keep on going with and breaking boards. There, there were literally people playing a version of this deck where they would always go second because they knew, whatever, I can break the board anyway. That's how resource uh, useful this deck is with its resources, basically. Really solid deck. I hope you found this interesting. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you want me to completely finish this on Master Duel and potentially do more in-depth videos. Again, I don't know how many people actually want to see branded stuff on Master Duel. So do let me know. It's a lot of you are, but I might make it if you let me know if I, if I have to do that. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you soon. Ciao.